Hey, Crafter Sarah here with Craft Test Dummies, and today I wanted to show you guys Ranger Ink and Diane Reevely's newest additions to the Dilutions Ink Spray line. There are now 24 total colors out with the addition of these new six that Diane debuted at this last CHA in January. So we've already done a full write-up of the Dilutions Ink Sprays on Craft Test Dummies, um, and I will link that in the bottom of this video post and then in our post on the website. But today I just kind of wanted to show you guys the six new colors and then some fun things that you can do with them in your Diane uh, art journal or any art journal you have at home for that matter. So starting with the colors themselves, from left to right, on the left we have Polished Jade, which is this really pretty kind of teal color. And just to contrast that with some colors that are already in the ink spray line, here's your Vibrant Turquoise. You can see the Polished Jade definitely has more of a green tint to it than the Turquoise has more of a blue. Going on, we've got the Slate Gray. There's no gray in the Dilutions ink spray line yet, so I thought this was a super great addition. Then we've got Pomegranate Seed, which is this really nice, deep, kind of reddish pink magenta color that I really enjoy. After that, we've got Ground Coffee, which is a great shade of brown. And again, just to compare and contrast with colors that are already in the ink spray line, here's your Melted Chocolate. This definitely has a warmer tone to it, whereas this brown in the Ground Coffee has much more of a cooler tone to it. Up next, we've got Chopped Pesto, which is a really nice, rich, dark green color. It's probably my favorite from this release so far. And then finally, we have Tangerine Dream, which is a really deep orange color. And again, just to compare and contrast that, here's squeezed orange right next to it. And you can just tell that the Tangerine Dream definitely is a deeper color and has more of a red addition to it. So those are the six new colors. And next we'll go over some fun and different things that we can do with those in our art journal. So here's my Dilutions art journal. I also reviewed this by itself back on Craft Test Dummies a while ago and did a few full video review of it. So you guys can check that out. Um, I know in the video review I showed you lots of different ways to do double stencils and masks and do a background color and stuff. So today I wanted to show you guys a couple different things that you can do um, with the Dilutions other than that and those basic things. One thing I wanted to show you guys real quick is I don't know about you but I often craft myself into a corner, especially when I'm art journaling because I have so many products out that I use at the same time. So one thing that I really uh, like to do when that happens is I will actually cover up the opposite side of the page that I'm working on with my craft mat. That way if I'm stenciling or picking up colors, I can do that directly on my craft mat next to the page I'm working on and I don't feel like I have this huge distance or space between um, what I'm working on and my mediums or sprays or whatever. So with this page, I did go ahead and spray the background with four of the new colors. Um, I sprayed the Tangerine Dream in the top, then we have some Pomegranate Seed, the Polished Jade, and the Chopped Pesto. I sprayed my page down with water first and then sprayed the colors on top of that and kind of just worked my book back and forth until uh, they got kind of happy and fun together. Another thing that I did was to create the shadow behind my little girl here was I went ahead and I took one of my flossy or fanny stencils or masks of Diane's and just sprayed the back with the new uh, slate gray color and that created the shadow effect and then I put this over a magazine, a picture of a magazine model and traced it and cut it out and put her on top. Another cool thing that I played with when I did was her hair. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is actually Diane's leaf stamp. And you can see it kind of fits right over the top there. And all I did to create that was I took a piece of Ranger's new Distress Watercolor cardstock and put that on my mat. And then I actually used some of Diane's Pure Sunshine for this and just take a couple quick spritzes there. And take your stamp, and I just randomly kind of blot my stamp around in the ink. And then put it directly onto your watercolor cardstock. And then when you pick it up, it doesn't have to be totally perfect, because we are going to go back in here with a water brush. But you see, and it's definitely going to absorb and dry into that watercolor cardstock with that kind of spiffy texture. And then the higher parts where there's more ink on the stamp is going to give a different color too. So then all I'm going to do is take my water brush, 
which I hope there it is. And using the same ink that's on my craft mat is I'm just going to go in and kind of fill out some of the spots where I missed and then also fill in any blanks or empty spots with the ink. We'll go ahead and do that real quick. And there, I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, the next step I did with the hair was, here's another sample I have, was once everything was dry and I filled it in like I just showed you guys, was I took a distress marker and I started drawing the lines of the hair. And I just kind of haphazardly do it, did it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I did take some of the new ground coffee color, sprayed that back into the ink that I already had um, on my mat from when I originally stamped the leaves or leaf hair. And then went in and filled in between some of these lines to again create more color and texture to the hair. So I thought that was pretty cool. You don't need to limit yourself and your stamps with just one idea like the leaves. You can use it for a lot of other things. This could also maybe be like a cool flame or whatever. Um, just use your imagination and think outside the box and have fun with it. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up that little mess there. And one other fun thing that I really like to do with dilutions, because if you guys have played in the journal before, you know that if you do use a lot of ink on your pages, sometimes the ink will seep through to the other side. So that was the case with this page, especially since at the beginning, if you remember, I told you I sprayed it down with water first, and then I used ink, and the inks actually did bleed through. So don't let that discourage you when you're working on your journal because, and I know this is really, really bright, but um, one fun thing that you can do with it is I really enjoy mixing my dilutions with clear gesso. And just to show you, you can mix it with a white gesso, but when you mix it with the clear, like this one at the top is pomegranate seed mixed with clear gesso, you get a really rich and true to what the actual spray color is. Whereas if I mixed it with the white, it definitely lightens it up a bit. And you can add more ink to your white gesso to make it stronger, but to be honest, it never gets that true to color um, hue that you would with the clear. So what I did with this page was I mixed the pomegranate seed with the clear gesso and then using my palette knife, I just quick um, kind of smeared it around with the back of it all at random areas and I then once it was completely dry, took different colors of my dilutions and sprayed that on top of it and then wiped it up with a wet paper towel and you got kind of a cool, funky, bright background effect. I've also done that with other pages here. Let me find one real quick. Here I did some of the Tangerine Dream with clear gesso, and then I did use the white with the pomegranate too under that, and then I put pure sunshine in just the dilution spray over the top, and then again wiped off any excess off of the gesso to reveal it. And again, just to show you one more little swatch here, here's the Tangerine Dream. Here I mixed it with um, different, each starting at the top was one spray of Tangerine Dream with the white gesso, and then I increased a spray with each time I mixed it. And you can see it gets a little bit darker, but not too much, not compared to if you mix it with the clear gesso like I did here. So just another fun thing you can do with your sprays. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I would be more than happy to answer them. And I hope you guys have a very crafty day. See you guys later.